sometimes, for example, we play, I don't know, 3v3 small spaces. Yeah. So, you know, you've got those small wingers, Chris Somerville, Poveda, <laughs> another, another, another. This is the official Leeds United podcast. So please welcome to the show, uh, Junior Furpo. How are you, my friends? I'm really, really good after this international break. I had some enjoyable time off. Obviously, we, we've we've had you on the show, but it, 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 before, but it feels like um, it feels like an eternity since you were last on. I think that um, obviously there's a lot going on with Leeds United. You've, I think you've since got married, and there's been all kinds of things happening. So um, yeah, uh, I, I I don't even know where to begin. Really, how's um, how's the last uh, how's the last twelve months been for you, mate? I know it's been tricky with uh, injuries and whatnot, yeah. but how have you been? It's been a roller coaster, honestly. It's been a roller coaster, but I think it's what it is. It's what is life. It's what is football, ups and downs. But it's been it's been good, honestly. I, I at the end of the day, I just go home. I have a lovely family, great friends, and this is the most important thing. And then football, in the other hand, I'm surprised that you've actually come back on, Junior, because normally people that do the podcast with Matt Lewis, they don't come back and show the face again. So I'm delighted I get to actually what see you, this? meet you, and hear you, and, and get to know the stories. And that that you know you've just saying about the last 12 months. Um, I know you've had your your struggles off the field with injuries. You're speaking to the most injured man in Leeds United's history. <laughs> um, how, you've, you've said you've got a really. I had a really really good support mechanism through my family as well. I was I was blessed that I had a wife that understood. Um, and supported us in a family that I was able to talk to. Have you found that that has been so beneficial for you during this process to get yourself back on the field? Honestly, the most important thing for me, it was my, probably I will say my wife as well, yes, because obviously it's so difficult sometimes to get back home. I've got my two kids who want to go out and play with me or yeah. who want to go out to have a walk, go to the park, and I'm not in the mood because I'm angry. So... She understood all the time and she always knows when when I'm in a good mood or in a bad mood. But obviously it's not just about her helping me. I think it's about also in in my case I, I had to I had to raise the hand and ask for help in the outside, you know, because obviously you know when you are injury for no, I didn't I wasn't injured for a long, long time, probably like you, but it was more fit stop start. injury fit. Injury, yeah. fit, yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's 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 just really bad. I was going to say because the mental side of that for you, when you get so close to something and then the breakdown again. I know, I know, Patrick Bamford had been going through something very similar as well. I, I knew my long term. Yeah. I had to set goals and, and, and long-term goals to try and get back. Whereas with you, it's like you say, stop, start. So you've you, you've mentioned there that like you put your hand up and asked for help. How was was it more demanding mentally than it was physically? Because that that that's that's a side I struggled with. Obviously, yeah, like it's a big difference. Uh, at the end of the day, when you feel pain in somewhere, you know, you may you do pain on the knee and the on the hamstring, whatever. After one week, ten days, the pain is gone. You are not able to run. You are not able to to sprint and to play football. But the pain is gone. You can you can walk. You can sit. You can do everything apart from play football. But yeah. the worst is the mentally. Of obviously, for example, the last one for me, I think is it was the hardest of my life. I've I've had quite a few injuries, but the last one was the hardest. I I I was out for um, eight ten, eight to ten weeks. Do it with a um, LCL injury on the knee. I came back first day. I I went to do a tackle. I slide and I opened my legs and I broke my hamstring. So, <laughs> how difficult is it? Because this is a couple of years yeah. in a row now that you've you've effectively missed the preseason. I mean, how? Di- I mean, you played in the Plymouth game. You came on off the bench, but 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 how difficult is it to get up to speed when you've when you've missed that preseason? Also, not just not just physically, but also that. Um, We've got a lot of new players coming in, so not being around the new yeah. lads uh, every day in training, how hard's that? Well, I try, I try to be around a lot. I try to be around a lot. Even in preseason, I got injured before the Man United game, and I travelled with the team to Norway because I wanted okay. to be with the team. Great. I always try to be around the team as much as possible because obviously it's the best thing to have a good relationship with all your teammates. But <laughs> missing the preseason is so bad. I swear, yeah. <laughs> it's so bad. When you when you when you come back, for example, I came back in. A month ago, they are they are on the top of the hill. You know, they are flying because they are playing every three days, training every day. They are flying. The rhythm, mentally, everything is so sharp. And you just come out and you just you take time. Take time. You need yeah. to be 
I need to be prepared. And as I said before in the past, I think it was my, my biggest mistake because I didn't, I didn't have help. I didn't have nobody to tell me how to deal with it, how to manage it. Luckily, this time I used go to psychology. We, we work a lot in, in this, you know, in, in manage myself, like don't go hundred percent since the first days. Cause if you, if you go hundred percent the first day, mm-hmm. it will be bad for you. Yeah. So exactly go, go step by step, go back home happy every day that you didn't make anything worse and don't think about how good or how bad are you playing. Just focus on being able to play, to train every day. And paying dividends now because, like Matt said, we actually got to see you back against Plymouth and you got yourself um, 45 minutes under your belt. So you've come full circle. How are you, how are you feeling now that you've, you've managed to get the, um, the minutes? Yeah, good. You know, you know, always when you've been out for such a long time, the first game is a little bit tricky, you know, because yeah. you always, always you go out to the pitch thinking, you know, in the mind. But this time I just, I just wanted to enjoy the game. I just wanted to enjoy to be out with the lads. I didn't care about if I play my best or, or play pool mm-hmm. or whatever, but just being able to finish those minutes, come back to home and sit down with my wife and say, okay, it's, it's, it's done. It's done. We, I, I can't She had a happy again. junior. Junior was happy once again. Huh? <laughs> she was, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> came with a smile yeah, on his face. <laughs> I was, I was. But obviously in the championship, what have you noticed the, the difference has, has been? Have you, um, the, between the championship and the Premier League? It's tough. It's, 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 it's really high above every, any another league in the world right Was now. that quite a shock to you when you first came to Leeds, playing in the Premier yeah, League? Was it quite, I, was it quite shocking I, how fast it was? I didn't expect it like that. You know what I mean? Like yeah, wow. I was playing in the, in Spain, usually in Spain, there are not wingers, you know, there are quality midfielders that play in the wings. They go inside all the time and the fullbacks right. take the, take the space on the, on the wings. So fullbacks usually are not dribblers are not that explosive, but here you come here, you play any team, any team, Premier League championship doesn't, doesn't mind the team. And they have two wingers that are, Peaceful. <laughs> they are they are really good really good dribblers and yeah. and you just need to deal with it you know yeah. and yeah. It, when Marcelo was here it was pure mighty mum mum be mum so sometimes it's tough to defend Salah mum be mum or imagine yeah. now the guy from City Doku that is <laughs> yes. I, I would call it good good luck Mark imagine him <laughs> Good. Are you, are you, Imagine <laughs> man be man with him with all the feel, you know, all the space in the world to dribble in the league. Are you quite glad we're in the championship then, so you don't have to face him twice, no, twice a I season? Will, I, will, I will prefer to face <laughs> he him. He loves it, challenge him. Of course, anyway. course he wants to challenge him. Of course he yeah. does. The championship is, is, is a really good league. It's not like second divisions in, in another leagues yeah, in, right. in the world. I think yeah. is mm-hmm. I think can be, it might, I don't know, I'm not a huge, like, fan of statistics or whatever. I, I'm not too much about, I don't see too much football. I just, when I have free, I just want to join my family and my friend, some PlayStation, something like that. So I don't know, but it should be in top 10 leagues in the world for sure. You're a fullback that likes to, to get forward um, yeah. and, and create stuff at the other end of the pitch. Surely um, you must feel in the championship, you'll have a bit more opportunity to do that. Uh, I mean, I don't want to denigrate any of the wingers that you'll be facing, um, but it, you might, hopefully, particularly the way we play as well, which is a very possession-based. I was just about to say that, Matt. A bit, yeah. bit more freedom yeah, it's about, to, it's uh, a, to get it's about, it's about the way It's about the, the way that we play. If you've seen, for example, Sam, that he's been doing great all this all the season, he, he has the freedom to go high, yeah. to go inside. It's just, manager just leave freedom to everyone. You know, everyone is moving around. We have the ball a lot. Obviously, it's because... Is in the championship, but I think anyway with with this team, if we will be in the prem, we will have the ball quite a lot as well because yeah. it's, the, it's the idea of the manager and it's what we need to do. That must have been exciting for you when you saw obviously Daniel Farker come in and you saw the sessions that he was putting in the style of play. I, I would be imagining as an attacking fullback um, and as a as a player myself, an attacking player. I'd be absolutely thriving on his style of play. So you must have been thinking, hang on a minute, this this guy is going to embrace my game as well. But this was the main reason why why I stay. Like, obviously, I've had a lot of offers. I have everything. But first of all, um, you know, when you find a place that you feel that is home, this is what I found here in Leeds. For two wow. things. Usually, Spanish players came from the sunny and yeah. lovely yeah. lifestyle in <laughs> Spain. But... 
I'm I'm a, a family guy. Like I I'm most of the time I'm at home with my kids, with my wife. A lot of family come come here, friends or whatever. So for example, I live in I lived in Barcelona for two years. My house was was one minute walking to the beach. One minute. And I didn't went to the beach once in two years. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so the lifestyle here is different, you know? In Barcelona or Seville was a little bit um how I can call like you know when you go out and all the people is looking at you yeah. asking for yeah. asking for picture when you are with your kids or whatever. Yeah. Here people is more polite, you know, like they they oh, leave wow. your space. They leave your space, they they leave you to do your thing and after they come really politely, hey Junior, please can we take a picture? That's- of course, man. There's no That's why Matt, like, Matt that's enjoys nice Leeds also because that happens to Matt in, in Leeds in England. But when he goes to America, I've been with him in Orlando. You can't go five feet without a Harry Potter fan coming <laughs> up and saying, can we have a picture? <laughs> <laughs> All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. I've been fortunate enough to be around Ellen Road for a couple of the games uh, and, and hung around with a couple of the players. And... Uh, the harmony that it feels like amongst this group is is really quite electric. Um, it feels like we've got a bunch of, of leaders, um, a bunch of people that want to step up for the club, but but also, like you were just saying, want to step up for each other. I mean, I feel like the sky can really be the limit with the with, with this team. Um, is everyone just on cloud nine right now? I think I think the mood is great. The mood is, is really really great. And if you got, if training sessions are are funny. We are just yeah. making jokes every time because obviously we've got like sometimes, for example, we play, I don't know, 3v3 small spaces. Yeah. So, you know, you've got those small wingers, the f- Chris Somerville, Poveda, <laughs> the another, the another, the another. And they just, they just rip us, you know, and, and they, we are making jokes every time because they, they are just, they are just too good in small spaces. You know, it's tough, it's tough for right. us, for the, for the defenders, for the tall guys. No, 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 not for, no for us, no for us. So the, the, the mood is great. The mood is great. This is well, so funny. They're enjoying their football. That's the main thing. This is so funny. Do you know who he sounds like? He sounds exactly like the left back that I played with, Ian Hart. When Aaron Lennon oh, and yeah. James Milner came on the scene, yeah. and the first thing Hardy said, there was a 15-year-old boy. Aaron Lennon came from school, junior. He was just absolutely insane. And Ian Hart got in the dressing room, and we <laughs> were like, "You're a full international footballer, and you've just had a 15-year-old." And he went, "Yeah, the little." <laughs> he said, "He's so good." <laughs> <laughs> people, people, people doesn't don't know how how difficult it is to to deal with those small players. You know, they they, they <laughs> gravity the low the low gravity is so low. <laughs> and it sounds ridiculous to say because you're what, like 27, but you are, you know, one of one of the senior players in the team now. Yeah. I mean, how is it yeah. with all these these young lads coming through the ranks, these young swaggering lads who think they they know everything? Yeah, no. like, is it <laughs> hard work diff- or are it's, they? It's different. It's different. It's different. But they are just funny though. At the end of the day, they are hard workers. All of them. All of them right. want to wants to. If you see Cree, like since I've been here, I I. Cree more or less was with the first team at the start. So yeah. how how he changed his his way to act, for act to behave. Now you can see that is a is a is a man you know who wants to right. who wants to win who wants to score that just yeah. doesn't want to dribble all the time. Before he wanted to dribble all the time, you know, dribble the the fullback after wait for him dribble again <laughs> wait for him dribble again. Now he's he's more like. You know, I want to score, 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 right. assist, score, and that's that's great. When you see when you see young players um, changing like that, you, you feel really proud of it because obviously, I think everyone took part on it. Everyone was with him, telling him with him, talking with him to do yeah. the right things, and now he's committed to do it. So that's brilliant. How's it been with uh, Jorginho? Because obviously, he had a difficult start to his to his career at Leeds. Yeah. Um, it was a tough season for everyone, but obviously, he came in with a big price tag. There was a lot of pressure put on his shoulders from in a January transfer, um, but then this season, I mean, he's just set the world alight. I mean, what's what's it been like his his progress over the last twelve months? I think the the main thing for Georgie is the confidence that the manager gives to him. As soon as the manager came, since the first day he was on Georgie, you could see that he just loved Georgie. So it's the same for I think more or less every player that. He came and he talked to you and he said to you what he wants from you, you know. So apart apart from that, after what George is is doing on the pitch is is just his um, his reward. 
it's, it's just right. him. Like he, I think he changed his mind. Obviously, it was really difficult for him. Came in January, bad situation, as you say, the price tag. Julie, I've got to ask you. I say this in every podcast to all the lads I play with. The only thing I'm, I don't quite get. Oh, here we go. Is, is what the guy wears. He's dress sense, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I know. I know. It's kind of difficult, you know, because I, I try to give him some some advices about dressing, but he, he, he doesn't you, give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get him down to our tailor. Down to our tailor, yeah. Michaelsburg. You need to get him down no, there. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's horrible. It's horrible. Good guy, does, Michaelsburg, by the way. Does, He's a really good guy. Do you boys give him stick I share a tailor. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Do you? Yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that little yeah. plug there means that he'll be getting more free suits, yeah? Uh, not if I know <laughs> Michaelsburg. <laughs> well, we right. can try. <laughs> we can. Is, is Jorginho as difficult to get the ball off as he looks? Because I, I, it just looks like you never know what he's going to do. And half the time, it looks like he doesn't know what he's going to do. <laughs> but he just comes away with the ball every yeah, single time. Yeah, no, the thing, the thing, the thing was him is he has the ability of the use the um, two legs. You know, he right. has the this ability that's yeah. <laughs> that's just unplayable. Like I've seen this, he's good. Honestly, well, the the, the another yeah. one that I seen is just apart from the wall is Dembele. You know, you don't you don't know if the guy right. is lefty, lefty or righty. <laughs> you don't know. But but Georgie has the ability too, and that's something really really huge for a, for attacker. Michael can tell you. I I I I couldn't see Michael playing, but if an attacker have the ability of use the two legs, more or less really similar, is 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 just a, a a big advantage. I only had one leg and that was my right leg. My left was for standing on, otherwise I would have had a bigger price tag. So that's, <laughs> when, I, when I see him play, I understand the, the balance. And, uh, and like you say, because yeah. de- as a defender, you're thinking, hang on, what way is this guy going to go here? So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good to see. What are, what are your targets for the, for the, um, rest, of this, for the rest of the season um, with Leeds? Obviously, uh, everybody we spoke to was talking about promotion being the main one, but from a personal yeah. Personal note for you and for a team as a collective, what, what you what you set your sights on? Personal one, just stay healthy, stay fit. Yeah. yeah, it's my biggest, it's my biggest target. It's my biggest thing. If I stay healthy the whole season, I will be really happy at the end because I think if you, everything will be good if I can stay fit. I I trust myself, and you as a player, and you know that when you have a good run of game. Uh, yeah. when you feel good with your body is totally different than when you are in and out in and out so just stay fit and everything else will come will come together listening on together obviously we've got a busy period coming up with christmas which is busy in any league but particularly the championship with a 46 game season everyone's going to have to play their part um i i imagine you're going to be getting a lot of game time in 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 the next few weeks um just how difficult is that playing games every three days? Um, it just seems so relentless. Honestly, if you ask every player in the world, I think they will prefer to play every three days than train the whole week. I, I, wow. From my point of view, I prefer it. One, because you get more chance to play. You know, if you mm-hmm. play week weekend by weekend, it's more or less the same team will play every game. If you are even right, more, right, if you right, are right. winning, so difficult for the manager to make changes. So this mm-hmm. give us. Every, this give everyone opportunity and obviously I prefer to play a game than train <laughs> I think every player preferred to play rather than train so it's it obviously it's, it's kind of difficult because for example in the um, boxing day we just play one game and two days after we play another game no so yeah, yeah. that's that's a short a short time to recover the body the only thing that I don't love is that we play on the first and I cannot you know in Spain we do the grapes on at uh, twelve at uh, twelve a.m. twelve a.m. well twelve in the night. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, the, yeah, yeah. We do the twelve grapes, and we cheese, we champagne, and whatever. All the family. What's the um? Just for our just for our listeners who aren't aware, what is the uh, what's the twelve grapes? It's not twelve glasses of wine, I assume. It no, is in my household. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the twelve grapes are um twelve seconds before is twelve midnight zero one. So it means is yeah, it's midnight. You eat each second one grape. It's a tradition in Spain. You each oh, wow. you, yeah, each second one grape. And you can imagine everyone is like because they can't. <laughs> but if you manage if you manage you manage to do it and you don't die doing it, after you end up <laughs> cheering with some champagne and the new year oh, starts. Yeah. There you that go, Matt. We've got something. Matt, Matt, me and you are gonna have yeah. to do this this year. 
the grape challenge. Yeah, just try we'll it. See. Just try it. We'll, yeah, twelve we'll grapes. See, I'll, twelve right, grapes. Done. Junior, you were you were born in the Dominican Republic, is that right? Yes, that's right. Yeah, I had, I've holidayed at the Dominican Republic with my partner and also in St. Lucia. So um, I want to say a beautiful, beautiful country. Um, obviously, all the islands over there. But I, I, I just saw that you grew up there till the age of six, I believe. So, um, And you represent the national team now, yeah? Probably. Yeah. Probably. How you know that? Who told you that? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do my research when I come on these podcasts. But it was your contacts. Just when I saw, the, I, I saw the Dominican Republic, I thought, wow, we've got some very fond memories of holidaying, holidaying over there in St. Lucia in the So very, yeah, good on you, man. It's, um, you're not angling country. for yeah, the uh, Dominican yeah. Republic head coach's job, are you, Bridget? Yeah, uh, you never know, to, mate. I'm sure it is. Uh, yeah, I've got my pro licence. I'm, I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, great. Uh, like, Dominican is just a lovely country. Now, the, the last days, it's been some travels in the country with some mm. storms and yeah, uh, yeah. always it's like that in the Caribbean, you know, always like that. And people has been suffering a lot. So, so yeah, now the country is having not good days, but is it is lovely country always. Well, David O'Leary always used to ask me where you're going in the summer for your holiday break, because he knew if I was going to the Dominican Republic on an all inclusive holiday, I'd be coming back three or four or five kilos overweight. So he was always telling me to keep running and keep training. So there you go. Fantastic spot. Yeah. The food, the food there, the food there is unbelievable. Yeah. unbelievable. What favorite. would be the tradition? What would be the most traditional dish? Cause obviously we've got Yorkshire puddings. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's nice by the way. I like it. Yeah. It, with gravy. Like it. Perfect. Um, <laughs> Traditional is probably is kind of it called the flag. Is rice, black beans, it's not like the beans here, different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Black yeah. beans and fr fried chicken. That would be. Oh wow! But but the spices are just different. I'm cultured, uh, yeah, impressed with it. Yeah, <laughs> I'm actually quite surprised. I'm quite yeah. surprised. I've got so many because I live in Florida, so I've got so many friends that go down to Domrep for for holidays, and they all just say it's it's stunning, and uh, and I have to go there at some point. So it's on my yeah. list. I'll definitely gonna gonna visit. Um, yeah, do it, man. I will. I'd certainly. If you're playing, if you're playing for the team, I'm gonna have to fly over and watch you play. Uh, I Ooh. mean, that's yeah, that's a given. Yeah, yeah. Probably you need to fly. We have the. Um, Olympic Games in Paris 2024. If you want oh, to come wow. there, I Oh, wow. Be. I mean, that would be pretty amazing, that. That would be fantastic. That would be nice. That would be nice. Um, you as well, Michael. I didn't put that <laughs> I might be the head coach by then, mate, so I'll be picking you every game. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's nice. <laughs> Like he's bringing me in as, as his number two, so it's going to be great. I told you, I, 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 I challenged him last on the last podcast, Junior. I challenged uh, Matt. I was talking about tactics and formations and things, and I, I, I actually said, "What would you do against this team?" And he, he was kind of like thinking, "Is this a wind up?" And he answered it very, very well, considering mm -hmm. that he hasn't got his coaching badges. And I said, "I'll tell you what. I'll give there you the benefit go. of the doubt. There, I'll take you as my number two if I get a gig anywhere." So he out, he out I'll go get my licenses. Right? Yeah, I was very surprised. Yeah, your license. <laughs> well, that brings me very nicely onto management and and the boss, as we as we're calling him, uh, Mr. Farker. Um, obviously, you've talked about him a few times with regard to the younger players and and our style of play. Um, but I just want to ask you because I know I know we've kept you a while already. But I just want to ask when he came into the team, what was that like? I mean, did he? Did, I've asked a couple of other players. So, did he get you into his room? Did you talk about your place at the club? Um, I've heard of. I've heard. More than a few people say that he's quite a big uh, admirer of, of you and your skills, uh, Junior. So I just wanted to know how yeah, it yeah. sort of went when you when you first met uh, Farker. He was speaking to me a lot during the training sessions, you know, about... The, he never asked me directly, what, what will you do? Like, I just... He asked me once, like, how are you feeling? What do you think about it? What do you think about this, about that? And I was like, yeah, I love your idea of play. I think it suits me perfect. I think... I think I, I just I just love it, and at the end of the day, I was talking with myself and with my wife a lot, like about what we will do. Obviously, our kids are in the school. As I say, I find a place who is who is nice, and the offers that I was getting, nothing combines me. Nothing combines me, honestly. To leave Leeds, every, every everything was in first division in a lot of leagues: Italy, French, Spain, whatever. But nothing nothing combines me. So at the end of the day, I choose this. I think he he was happy and I'm happy now. So it's the, it's the most important thing. 
He's got unfinished business. That's why, Matt. He's, he's got unfinished business, this man. I've got to say, Julian. Unfinished Julie, business. Been, Honestly, yes. also, yeah, you, as you said, it's, it's something something that that also comes to mind. Like, it's not the best way to live, you know? It's not the best way right. to live. Yeah. If I live like that, I will I will feel bad. I will feel bad. Yeah. I've got to say, well, I'm, I think uh, a lot of people in Leeds um, will, will really yeah. appreciate that. Um, I just, yeah, I just, I just want to thank you so much, really, Junior, for coming on because um, I think, as like Bridgie said about the the honesty you, you've shown today, I think is very, very refreshing. But beyond that, as well, I just think that you're just a really genuinely nice bloke, and and I think that a lot of fans out there uh, are going to really, really appreciate hearing you talk about about Leeds, about the club, about um, about your loyalty, which is yet another thing. Like honesty isn't isn't often seen a lot around football these days. Um, I think that people are really going to appreciate that. And I, and I hope that the fans um, can replace your, uh, uh, repay your loyalty um, with yourself. Uh, Cause I know obviously you've been, you've been out for a while, but now that you're coming back, I just hope everyone, and I know they will, everyone gets fully behind you. Um, and, and as you, uh, as you get back in this team, I'm looking forward yeah, to seeing you play out there 100%. so much, mate. In this club, as soon as you step in the pitch, they, they get behind you. It's, it's at least like that. At least like that. Like I cannot say I cannot say nothing different. Honestly. Amazing. So um so yeah, thank you very much. I think, yeah, are we done? I would I was saying thank you to finish. I think I'm we starving, are, mate. Um, I'm we, starving, we are, I swear. I, I, yeah, no, you can go and get some food. I know you've been <laughs> training today. So he needs, some food. He needs to fully... refuel. He needs to refuel. He needs to go yes. and do his rehab. Yeah, there need you go. Refuel. We need <laughs> you fully refreshed for the Rotherham game on Friday night. So please, by all means, go and go and refuel. Thank you so nah, much for your thank time. Thank you very Junior. much. Thank you very much. Really nice one. Really nice thank one. You, thank mate. you, guys. Take thank care, you. buddy. See you. This is the official Leeds United podcast. <laughs>